What is going on, everybody? The original Mako back, and today we are going to be breaking down the biggest content patch for Vampire Survivors to date. And it's exciting, it's fun, it's cool. But before we get into it, be sure you check the links down below. As always, if you want to see me do some Vampire Survivors runs live or play a bunch of other really cool, really fun, really exciting games, Twitch link is right down there in the description. We have a lot of fun, and I think you guys would enjoy it. And be sure you're subscribed to the channel. We're getting closer and closer to 3,000 subs, and I be really cool if we could hit that soon uh there's going to be tons of content coming to you guys on all sorts of games uh including vampire survivors so be sure to hit the subscribe button turn on notifications so you know when the videos are posted but that being said let's not waste any more time and let's get into the video that i need to refresh the thing for again as always um so we're going to go over the patch notes very quickly because patch notes don't have a lot into it. And I'm going to be kind of explaining how to get everything because it's not as cut and dry as it is usually. So tweaks, armor and health bonus for Antonio. You go, Antonio. Uh, health bonus for Gennaro and Suor Clearsey. Great. Movement speed bonus for Croce. Uh, change to the colliders in the Mad Forest. Hidden stage items now have a 100% chance to appear. And if you don't know what hidden stage items are, uh, it doesn't matter because you'll learn very, very soon what those are. And some minor optimizations, which really aren't that minor. Um, as somebody who was playing on a not great specs, uh, near the end of the game, it was borderline unplayable with all the frame droppage. Uh, not really. But it was really, really hard to move around, really, really hard to do anything, frankly. And after the optimizations, it is significantly better. Obviously, you know, when it comes to like if you when you watch some of the runs I'm going to be posting on the new update, bitrate is still a thing. But in terms of frame droppage, we're chilling. So pretty, pretty pog optimizations. Um, bug fixes, it's just some tentative fixes for some um, freezing bugs that have been going on. And then stage three, the new stage introduces a new gameplay a few new gameplay mechanics, so you might want to take it easy and disable your curse power-up if you have it enabled. Also contains a new type of item that you can pick up to permanently unlock a new game feature. We will obviously be talking about that. And unlocking stage 3 will also make its enemies and events eligible to spawn in the green acres. Um, so, we'll talk about that in just a second, but a little bit of a, a note here, future content. So, at as of right now, I'm going to give you the TLDR here. Uh, content patches are going to be every two weeks from here on out. Uh, it was previously every week. That's a pretty incredible pace to keep up for a long time, and he's been doing it. The, the devs have been doing it for a while. So this is a change that uh, I feel like most, like gun, take Gunfire, for example, if you've watched my Gunfire content. Gunfire originally was posting weekly updates, balances, bug fixes, uh, some new content in there, but uh, balancing the game every week. Uh, that turned into every month. There was no there was no in between there. Like it was just from every week to every month. That was it. So the fact that we're going from every week to every two weeks means we're still getting new content at a very regular basis, and that's just super exciting. I think the 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 best thing for me is reading this right here. Um. I've built the game specifically to allow myself to make new content quickly. We love to hear that. That's yeah, uh, amazing. So that being said, that's the kind of brief little quick bing bop of the patch. But let's talk about it a little bit. So first and foremost, the first thing you're going to want to do is reach level 40 in the inlaid in in library um, and then just quit. The, quit the game. If you're trying to unlock stuff, that's what you want to do because all of the other unlocks will come on the new stage and reaching level 40 in the inlaid library will unlock the new stage, which is the Dairy Plant, Stage 3. Uh, the magic map hidden in here might finally lead us to a vampire or at least to more roast chicken. Ha ha ha. So, the magic map hidden in here, what are we talking about? Uh, the, there's a few different achievements here that we got from this update. Uh, the next one is find the Milky Way map. 
uh, find and open the coffin in the dairy plant and defeat the sword guardian in the dairy plant to unlock hyper mode as well as unlock or uh, evolve the new weapon, which is the, where is it? The Song of Mana. Um, so the important ones are defeating the sword guardian, finding the Milky Way map, and finding and opening the coffin so you can unlock the new character in the new map. Well, you, you get the new character everywhere, but unlock the, the, the character to play, and you have to unlock it in the new map. So basically, as soon as you start up a game, on the new new map, I'll just go on in with the new character just to kind of show you what, what it's going to be like. You'll spawn in, and you won't quite see this, <laughs> but you see these little arrows around here, like this little, oh, it's pointing me this way. Oh, look, what is this? What's on my screen right now? You'll see a little arrow just like that pointing you in a direction. You want to full, spree, full speed, book it, sprint, ignore all enemies, and go to that arrow. That arrow will take you to the Milky Way map, which then permanently unlocks what you're seeing on the screen now for all of your future runs. What is this, you might be asking? Well, as it said in the patch notes, um, items, what, what, what were they called? Uh, stage, uh, the stage-specific passives that you can get will 100% be guaranteed to spawn, and this map will show you exactly where they are. In general, they're going to be in about the same spots every single time. And once again, it gives you a nice little direction indicator uh, on where to go. One thing I will mention is that this map might look, oh, like, wow, we can go grab all four of these items. And we can get six passives to grab these four. We're going to have ten items. We'll be good to go. No. It will take you probably 30 minutes to walk down here and get the Candelabrador and then walk back up here to get the attract orb. These items, the, the, the map is huge. Like, it's, the, the scale is very hard to comprehend until you play, but getting from here to here takes a long time. Um, so, that's the first thing you're going to want to do because it's the first option that the game gives you. It gives you a big arrow. You go right there, get it, boom, done, great. The next thing you'll want to do, assuming at the, at that point you, you might honestly be in a bad spot, you might not be able to continue the run. In fact, I would probably just leave and reset because the next time you hop in, you will jump into a game and you will have this map available to you and you will have a separate arrow that is now pointing you to some other foreign object that is the coffin. It has the same thumbnail as the little picture of the coffin in the achievement description and that is is where things get spicy, because this is how you unlock the new character. I was extremely confused on how exactly it worked, so that's why I'm here to help you be less confused. When you do the coffin part, you'll get to the coffin, a huge circle of enemies will spawn, and you can make your way to the coffin, you can do whatever you want really, but nothing happens. Uh, so how do you unlock the coffin? Well, as you can see here in this picture, there are guards that spawn right around the coffin, and there's a lot of them, and they're not super easy to kill, and you have to kill all of them before you can open the coffin. So every single guard that surrounds that coffin has to be killed, and then you have to do enough damage to the coffin. It's not much, and the coffin will open, and you'll be great. You'll be good. New character will be unlocked. My suggestion, and this is what I did. I got extremely lucky. But right as the guards like spawned in, I leveled up. I got pentagram. Pentagram instantly wiped them. We were good to go. If you're not so lucky, then hopefully you're you're able to take them out in a relatively swift fashion. That way you can proceed and unlock the new character that is actually broken. I will be showing this character off tomorrow a little bit more. So, that's the next thing. So now we've got the Milky Way map. Look at this. We've got passives everywhere. This is great. We've got the new character, which is just unbelievable. Beautiful. You love to see it. Um, the last thing was defeating the, the... I forget what the name of the enemy was. But it was to unlock hyper mode. And I believe that enemy is the boss that spawns at 28 minutes on this map. Um... 
Oh my god, we have Max Curse. I haven't played Max Curse on this map yet. Um, but yeah, essentially, uh, that's how you're going to be able to unlock everything. It does not take long at all, unlike last update, which it took me actually like two and a half, three hours to unlock everything. And that was going at a pretty good pace. Um, so, yeah. This one is much quicker as long as you know what you're doing and as long as you're able to get it done. Um, these little arrows, by the way, is that's what these guides are. So if you don't like those arrows, you can just turn it off and you're good to go. Um, then you can just turn it back on whenever. But uh, they are very useful, very helpful for getting those passive items. And once again, you can literally build your entire build around which passive items are on which map. It will always be the same for every single map. And uh, once again, it should just help you with your builds because you know, listen, I can get six passives and then I can go grab one or two of these extra passives for free and have seven or eight passives, which is bonkers, bonanzas. Um, oh, oh, and I guess unlocking the new weapon for the rest of the characters, you have to survive for 15 minutes on the new character, which isn't too difficult to do. Um... And then upgrades. Uh, upgrading the new weapon. I'll put the list right here. The updated upgrade uh, picture. Uh, the the new weapon is paired with the deadly curse. The, the curse skull passive. So um, the curse skull does drop. It is one of the floor drops on uh, the mad forest. So... Something to kind of just keep in mind there. But yes, the new the new weapon, Song of Mana, you get it to the uh, Menagea by upgrading it. And it is just really, really fun and really, really good. Uh, also, on the new map, the, the Stage 3 Dairy Plant, every single chest has the ability to give you a legendary upgrade. On the library in Mad Forest... Uh, usually you can't get a legendary upgrade until after 10 minutes. That is not the case. On stage 3 only, you can get a legendary upgrade at any time with any chest, assuming you meet the correct requirements of having the weapon fully upgraded and having the correct passive that corresponds to it, which I just showed you. Um, so a cool, fun little twist to that. But regardless... That's uh, most of the content from this update. Like I said, there's there's some things. There's some interactive parts of the map. Uh, on Dairy Plant, you can kind of move the mine carts a little bit. Uh, a few other nuanced things, but I wanted to go over the big picture stuff first and just get this video to you guys. And like I said, I'm going to be showing off the new character a bit. I'm going to be going for more kill records soon and, and all sorts of stuff with the new optimizations. It's, it's much easier to play the game in the late stages, like the 26 to 30 minute mark. So, going to be going for some new records and whatnot, so you're going to want to be subbed to that, and you're going to want to watch it live, frankly, over on the Twitch channel, which is linked down below. But regardless, let me know what you guys think of this update so far. I have been enjoying it thoroughly. I probably am going to make a new uh, tier list for characters and weapons. Maybe passives too, because I feel like there's enough new stuff since my last tier list that we can make a new one. Um, I think passives, there's three. Weapons, there's one, two, three, four. Four? New, new ones? And there's how many characters? One, two, three, four. Four new characters. I think that's plenty to make a new tier list. Regardless, you're going to want to be subbed to the channel. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you all have a wonderful rest of your day as always. Like I said, be sure to let me know what you think of this update down below. And I really appreciate the support. Thank you all. Hopefully you have a wonderful rest of your day. Love each and every one of your faces. And I will catch you all in the next video.